Savage here. We are here for our Tuesday interview. And this is the second time I've interviewed today's guest. How are you doing, Patrick? It's good to have you on today's call. I am doing great, Dave. Thanks for having me. Good. Well, guys, this is Patrick Galvin. He is the author of The Connector's Way. And I am excited about this interview for a few reasons. One, I've met Patrick once in person. I've interviewed him once. He was introduced by a mutual friend of ours, Mr. Steve Brown. How is it? Have you seen Steve lately, by the way? I haven't. He travels a lot, and so do I. Uh, we're due to get together pretty soon. And I just had a chance to have to always gra grab it. I mean, the guy is uh, looking into the future. He's got a good, good, good hands around uh, what's coming up for us. Yeah, he, he does. And it's interesting the dichotomy of the difference between him and you. Steve, for anybody who doesn't know, used to be the futurist and chief evangelist for Intel. So we're talking about very technical. I can't remember the name of this book, but it's all about how technology is impacting humanity in changing business. And, and so that's called the tech side of things. And then there's connecting, you know, human to human, person to person. Uh, usually you call it relationship building. And, and usually, Peter, one of the things I love about you, or Patrick, is that you don't call it networking, you don't call it relationship building, you call it connecting, you know, yeah. the connector's way. And I do think that is where the future is, is like we need to learn how to, whether we're human to human or digital, we need to learn to connect in a better way. Well, Steve connected me to you on a human to human level. So he is the futurist, uh, but Steve is one of the best connectors I know. He is just, he's a huge believer. It shows that you can bridge the divide. You can be as futurist as you want to be as he is. But at the end of the day, people buy from people and connect with people. And Steve is great at it. Well, let's, let's do this. So I did interview you. Anyone who's listening to that, highly recommend you listen to that first interview. I think it's about 20 minutes. We'll put a link down below. Uh, this could be a full one hour interview. So let's, let's go a little deeper this time. And if you could show everybody your backstory, and then I want to, I want to know why you wrote this book, The Connector's Way. Well, they, those two things actually dovetail. So my backstory is I went to school, I got my MBA in business. And when I came out into the work world, like a lot of overconfident MBAs, I thought I had all the answers. So I went to work for a couple different companies in sales and marketing jobs. And what I had learned in business school was that if you want to succeed, if you want to grow your company, it's all about marketing and advertising. That's what I had studied in school. Um, I went into my family's business and in the industry we were in, we spent 6% of our gross sales on advertising. And I figured, hey, that was the industry standard. I just had to have better advertising than my, than my competition. So I became a check writing machine. I was writing a lot of checks to newspapers, TV, radio stations, internet advertising, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I blew through hundreds and thousands of dollars. And then I did what I should have done from the very beginning, which was ask people why they were buying from us. And what I discovered was advertising was a factor, but it was not the factor. The number one reason why people bought from us was they were coming back. They were buying from us again, buying, in our case, furniture, additional pieces of furniture. And the number two category were people being referred into our business. Uh, so it really all came down to that relationship piece. And that was my aha moment. I had gone to business school. I had studied marketing and advertising, but I didn't learn really what was so essential to business success, which was building that connection. And that lesson that I learned over 20 years ago is more true today in this world of technology and infinite number of choices, whether someone's buying a mortgage or for that matter, any product or service. At the end of the day, why does someone choose one company versus another is it comes down to that relationship or connection. It's really hard, unless you're a Walmart or the low cost leader, um, to stand apart through price. Um, you, it's the intangible that's so important. And that's really what inspired me to leave the furniture business 17 years ago, start a company focused on helping people grow through relationship. And that's what got me to write my book, which is also on that theme. Well, it's, it's interesting that you were in retail. You know, in my interview with Steve, he talked about, hey, if you're in retail, you got to WACD your business. Do what Amazon can't do. Yes. And we are here at this point in the mortgage space where disruption, it's not in the air. It is happening. And every mortgage professional has to WACD their business. Do what Amazon can't do. And so let's, let's just talk about it because, well, one more thing before we talk about it, 
I know the, the story that you put in the book was a guy who was in insurance. Yes. And, and it sounded as though he was losing out to, you know, call it the online, the marketing companies that do insurance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in that story, you were talking about how to decommoditize yourself through personal connection. Could you speak to the story a little bit? And then yeah, let's I, pull I, some I, ideas away from it. Absolutely. I think what the insurance world went through uh, before the mortgage world is facing with some of the online competition is actually very illustrative. And when, you know, Geico and Progressive and the direct writers came into the market and Geico spends about a billion dollars a year on marketing. It's a big chunk of money. Um, and people said independent insurance agents who are not committed just to one company, but can write from a variety of carriers, that those guys were going to disappear. Well, the reality is they've held their own. And they've done it exactly through what you're talking about, Dave, is doing things that you know, a direct writer can't do. So I wrote a book with insurance in the forefront because at the time I was doing a lot of speaking in the insurance world. And they were running scared that they were going to be disintermediated, that these terrible things were going to happen when these big players just amped up their marketing more and more. And the, the remarkable thing is they have held their own. Um, in business insurance, it's still the independent that is ruling the day. It's not the direct writers. And in personal lines, the independent is hanging on. But those guys who are doing well are the ones who are thinking along the lines of what you're talking about. They're, they're, I don't think they use that phrase, what Amazon can't do, but they really are leveraging those connections and relationships that they have in their communities, both with their clientele as well as with their referral partners. And I think that that lesson and that story is, I th should be very inspiring for mortgage people. They have made it work in spite of you know, these huge players. And I'm convinced that in the mortgage world, uh, there are some big players right now who are going direct to consumer. There will be more. Who knows who's going to come on the scene? I've heard rumors of some very big players uh, who might be entering the mortgage space. Uh, but I think that those who focus on that relationship and connection and who use technology to augment those relationships and connections, I'm not a Luddite. I'm not saying don't use technology, not at all. But I think you use it to the extent that it empowers those relationships and connections. You're going to do fine. I think those mortgage folks are going to do absolutely fine. And those that, you know, don't think along the lines of what, what you suggested, I think are going to be in a world of hurt in the future. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt. I, I, I do believe the next decade could be better for the referral based local loan officer, but that's only if they master augmenting technology to, to build and scale relationships. Cause at the end of the day, it's, it's about, Two things that have created the disruption, marketing and social media, big players, you know who they are. Yep. They can get to the consumer better than ever. The cool part of that is, hey, we can, you can be the digital mayor of the, the local zip code that you live in, the city that you live in, the neighborhood that you live in, and then technology. You know, it's making the transaction, you know, faster, easier, more accessible and transparent to the family. But Loan officers, you've got mortgage coach and technology that can help you scale your promises and deliver a better advice experience. So, so a couple things. So everybody, I highly recommend you either read the book or you do the audio book. The audio book's like an hour and 40 minutes. And Patrick is, you know, the one doing the audio book. I always love it when the author is reading the book. So guys, check out the audio book, check out the book. Uh, Patrick will tell you how to get it at some point in the conversation. It's just a great parable. It's a great story that I think a lot of you will relate to. Um, knowing that you're talking to a mortgage audience, because I know you've talked to a number of mortgage companies, you've done keynotes at sales rallies. You know, what are, you, what are some of the things from your book or just things that you've seen that are most on point with the mortgage space? You know, in my book, The Connector's Way, it's a parable. So it is a fictional story in which the content in terms of the advice that I'm offering is embedded in the story. Uh, and the mortgage world has enjoyed that. So there are seven essential things that I talk about in the book for you know, building relationship. And we can go through those things if we have time. Uh, but really, the one that stands out the most for me is how can you really be of service 
to others. Uh, and that's to your clients and to your referral partners. And if you think service first, business will come to you. And I love what you said, Dave, and I think the Mortgage Coach is a great product. You've embedded some really smart technology, the use of videos that people can you know, attach when they're sharing uh, information via the it, personalizing is really very cool. Is I think that's a great way to, you know, both you're being of specific service with your product, but then you're personalizing it and you're really kind of honing it to that individual uh, person that you're communicating with. So figuring out ways that you can serve others, I think is really the, the rule that jumps to mind when I, when I think about mortgage and those LOs that I've met, and it, seemed, it doesn't matter where the geography is, um, those who are really thinking, how can I add value to the relationship in a way that my competitors aren't doing on a consistent basis, that's going to allow me to stand out. And I've heard so many success stories uh, from people who do that. And it doesn't have to be anything complicated or necessarily expensive. It just needs to be uh, something that's always put into place. And you kind of divest yourself of the outcome. Uh, not everyone you, you serve is necessarily going to want to do business with you or refer business to you. But if you have that service mindset, then things will naturally come around to you in many, many cases, and you're going to be highly successful. And it seems like those who are always looking for the quid pro quo uh, in the mortgage world struggle a lot more. Um, so that's kind of a, a high level. And if you want to go through other points in the, in the book, I'm happy to. But that's just one that jumps out at me when I talk to mortgage audiences and I've spoken all over the country. Uh, both the mortgage teams as well as their referral partners. They like to bring people together. So I'm talking to LOs and realtors at the same time, and it works equally as well in the real estate world. You know, those who are doing 80% of the real estate seem to be the 20% the who really understand that service value and that going beyond uh, what their competition is going to do. So it's a cool message because it works both for loan officers and it certainly works for the referral partners who are successful. No, no doubt. And I'd like to spend a few minutes and drill down on that, you know, turning marketing, turning selling into a service and just unpack some ideas on that. Uh, I also want you to be thinking like, you know, when you think of big concepts, be thinking of what's the next one, because we're going to get to another big concept. But I also want to bring you guys from the community. If you're on Facebook, you can, you know, ask us a question or share a concept. And, and I would even recommend that next time you're masterminding with realtors, talk about the concept that, hey, we're, you know, all we have is the connection we have with the families that we serve and the service that we give. And what are some opportunities to turn, you know, our sales process into a service? Because that's how you're going to win. And, and then here's another thing. And then I'm going to give you the first run at like ideas where a mortgage professional could turn, you know, could, could amplify their service. So be ready for that. But because here's another reason, not only will you get more referrals, not only will you build faster relationships, but you're going to feel better. You know, I listened to a, uh, it was on SoundCloud. It was a podcast this weekend by Son and Senek. I mean, it was insane. I'm going to put a link to it in the group here. I'm also going to post it. I just thought of it, but he, he talked about the science of like, when we give service to someone, we get energy from that. We get confidence from that. We, we like our job better. We like ourselves better. So I want you guys to think of what are some service experiences that you can give that will create better connection. They'll deliver more value to the family and you'll get more psychic energy. Like I'm proud of what I do because if you can show up as that, you know, alpha loan officer that's killing it, you, you don't have to worry about Amazon. You don't, and you don't have to worry about any competition. So Patrick, what are some, some tactics that you know of in the mortgage industry community? If you have some ideas, let's, let's bring, uh, I'm going to watch our uh, Facebook live right now and any comments that come in, I'm going to bring it into the conversation. So Patrick ideas. Strategies. I love that. I, I'm, I look forward to checking out that Simon Sinek uh, interview or piece that you mentioned, Dave, the first point in the connector's way is if you're going to be, of service to others, the first person who you have to serve is yourself. You have to have the right frame of mind. So you've got to kind of nurture your body and your mind in a way that creates that enthusiasm to reach out and be of service. And one of the things that I do is I have a gratitude journal. So, you know, I do it once a week. I have friends who do it daily and just take stock of what it is that I'm grateful for and write down five things once a week that I'm grateful for. Very simple stuff. Now, 
that works. And there's a lot of science behind doing that. I resisted for a long time. But once I realized that being of service and being grateful for the things that I have is such a huge thing, uh, it just, it was transformative for me. Now you could take that easily if you're an LO into um, business, kind of business development and cultivation of relationship. When you're thinking about what you're grateful for, chances are, if you're a loan officer, you're going to start thinking about some of your referral partners who give you a lot of business, some of your uh, clientele that has come back to you over and over again for a loan. Well, it's great to think about that, but why not put it into action? There's a writer named Gertrude Stein, and she has a wonderful quote, which is, silent gratitude is not much use to anybody. Well, rather than being silently grateful when you write in your journal, and that's a good thing, it makes you feel good, why don't you take a moment, grab your phone, put your, get your phone on here. We all have uh, phones with built-in high-definition cameras in them. Grab your phone and record a one-minute video just saying, hey, I wanted you to know I was working on my gratitude journal. I was thinking about you today. I am just feel so lucky to be connected with you, Mr. and Mrs. Realtor. You know, you make my life so much richer. It is just wonderful having uh, a chance to work with you. You are just such a great professional. It doesn't take any more than that. Something from the heart that's sincere to that relationship, but it's using technology to take the gratitude that you feel, put it into action and let people know how much they're appreciated because there are so many folks who go through the day without anyone really saying thank you or letting them know how important they are. And if you can just go through everyone you're connected to on a regular basis and do that nice personal touch and technology enables that so easily, stand out. I mean, it could be technology. If you want to go low tech, you know, write a note. I'm a huge believer in handwritten notes. I think one of the best marketing investments is some really nice stationery and a good pen and using it on a regular basis. So you can go low tech, high tech, but you can be of service to so many people just showing your gratitude in a way that is tactile, that they either see or can read, not an electronic message. You know, you can, you can go in and very quickly send someone a happy birthday on Facebook, but why not call them up and sing them happy birthday? A realtor did that with me this year and he blew me away. He had a terrible singing voice. I, can, I, just, I said, when he started singing me happy birthday, we started laughing. I know this guy through Rotary. He's a very successful realtor. And I, I saw him a week after that. I said, Niha, that was such a cool thing that you called me on my birthday. And he goes, he goes, Patrick, he goes, I like you, but honestly, I know you're a marketer. That's my best marketing tactic. I said, you're kidding me. He goes, yeah, I'm, I'm the only singing realtor in Portland that I know of. And uh, he goes, that's my best marketing. So, you know, these little things that maybe don't seem very consequential to you. Why couldn't you be the singing loan officer in your town? Why not? Who else is doing it? Yeah, so if you have a, a passion for singing, that is an idea. And, and I know some loan officers in the mortgage coach community that absolutely leverage that talent and passion. But it, here's the thing, guys, you know, just saying thank you. You know, there's, there's, you know, super unique, big ways that you can do that. There's little ways you can do that. I'm, I'm seeing more and more mortgage coach loan officers, you know, adding the video to the total cost analysis. You know, that, that is a service. First of all, the fact that you would give a total cost analysis to a family versus a fee worksheet is a service. It is a value. So obviously I'm Mr. Mortgage Coach. You know, when we're talking about how can a mortgage professional, referral-based local mortgage professional who wants to WACD their business, and really it's W-A-Z-D, Z for Zillow, you know, if you want to do that, deliver a better proposal, deliver a better presentation, and turn your sales pitch into a valuable service for the consumer and put a video on it. So that's an idea. I am seeing more and more loan officers just use their mobile phone, mobile to mobile, text to text video. So a native video, you know, say thank you. Uh, remind people of things. Uh, you know, anytime you give a video, it's, it's usually easier for you to create. Now, time out. That's assuming you've done it a lot. Like, if you're not used to using video, creating your first video and sending it to a client is probably the hardest thing you could do. You know, right. it's, it's because there's just emotion that's required. But, but if you've done it 10 times, and, and I've done it hundreds, maybe thousands of times now, so now, you know, putting a video, you know, text to text, doing calls like this, it's the easiest way for me to communicate. And it's also the most emotionally impactful way for me to communicate. So mortgage coach loan officers, you know, 
make a video. Patrick, any other ideas that come to mind in the community? Well, I, I, I'm looking I, for I, ideas, so post, I, a, post something. I, I just wanted to dovetail on, your, on what you just said, Dave. Uh, the perception of difficulty on the part of people who are receiving a video from someone in your community is really high because they probably have never done it themselves. So when they get that video from the loan officer via text or you know, embedded in the, in, in the mortgage coach uh, offering that, that is being presented to them, they perceive that that took a lot of time. And you're absolutely right. When you start doing videos, it is hard. But it's like walking a dog. You know, the more you get the dog out there, then, then it just becomes like a, an automatic muscle. So I would encourage people in the community to use that cool feature that you've embedded in your product to use video. And it may be a little bit cumbersome at first or seem unnatural, but man, once you uh, are on video number 50, it's like sending an email or sending a text, just a, a simple text-based text. Um, it becomes so easy, but what's so cool is people perceive it as being difficult. And it's that perception that you want them to have because anything that they perceive as difficult is going to make it more valuable to them. So it doesn't cost anything, there's monetary cost, but people perceive that there is a huge time cost and that's not the case. I mean, you actually will get much better and faster sending videos than you could, you know, sending text-based messages. So definitely people should embrace that. Yeah, and if anyone has not listened, well, I know people have not all heard it, but I did the art Uh, sorry, got hijacked from a phone call. I did an interview with Josh Metal a couple, I think it was a week ago, called The Art and Science of Personal Connection. And in that interview, you'll hear from Josh, who, you know, does a tremendous amount of business. I mean, he's a, a Hall of Famer. If there was a mortgage Hall of Fame, he'd be in it. And, and he's using video more than ever. And listen to that interview, hear why. Uh, you know, Peter, or Patrick, Patrick, uh, I know one idea that you shared in the last interview that I did with you uh, was around giving people a review, you know, and I think that's overlooked where, you know, like every loan officer should be giving, you know, LinkedIn reviews to their realtors. But could you, I don't necessarily want you to repeat it, but well, actually you can repeat it. We probably have a lot of people on today's call that did not hear that interview. But if you could just share some of the ideas you had from the last time I interviewed you. Ab absolutely. So LinkedIn, they actually use the terminology recommendation. So all the social platforms sort of change their, their terminology on LinkedIn. They call them recommendations. And it's important to differentiate that from endorsements. So LinkedIn will allow you to kind of give a thumbs up on a certain subject area expertise. Those are not very useful to people because they're kind of a dime a dozen. You just click a button. They may be phased out from what I've heard from LinkedIn folks. The recommendation though is here to stay. And What's interesting is the vast majority of recommendations are, that are on LinkedIn are there because somebody has asked one of their connections to recommend them. Uh, the cool thing is if you're connected to somebody in the first degree, you, either you've reached out to connect with them or they've reached out to connect with you and you've accepted it, uh, you can actually just go onto LinkedIn, find their profile picture, uh, click below uh, or next to that picture and recommend that person and you can spontaneously recommend them without them asking for it. Now, what's so cool about this is you will likely be, if you're a loan officer recommending a realtor, probably the first person who's ever recommended that realtor without the realtor having to ask for it. And that puts you in a category of one. And that's what you wanna be in, in this world in which uh, you have all this electronic competition Jeff Bezos is not going to go on and recommend realtors uh, or no other big tech titan running some company is going to recommend one of your connections. You can do that. And it doesn't cost you anything to do. And it's not hard. Once you get good at it, in five minutes, you can write somebody a recommendation that's heartfelt. You could say, you know, this is a great realtor. Here's why I enjoy working with them. They always get things done on time. You know, they really have their customer's best interests at heart. They understand. What, you could say whatever you want to say really fast from the heart. It shouldn't be scripted. It shouldn't always be the same thing. And what will happen every time I write a recommendation for somebody, I get a phone call, I get a text, I get an email of someone saying, wow, that is the nicest thing anyone's done for me this month, this year. It's always over the top. It makes me feel kind of bad because it doesn't take that much time. And it really solidifies a relationship. Now, 
if you're going to be recommending various realtors, just kind of this is a pro tip you want to keep in mind is you can actually go into your recommendations and you can click next to each recommendation and say, I don't want this recommendation to appear on my profile as a recommendation I've given. And I would suggest that you consider doing that because if you're recommending multiple realtors, you don't want people to think that that's your marketing tactic. So what will happen when you click don't appear on my profile is it will appear on that realtor's profile. They won't know you've selected that option. It just won't show on your profile as having given that realtor a recommendation. They won't care about that. The main thing is that they can have it on their profile. So that's just kind of a, a pro tip, but I'm not seeing this done nearly enough. I go around the country. I tell loan officers to do this. Those who do this, I hear back from them saying, wow, that is the coolest thing. That was my one big takeaway from your seminar. I've used it. It's been fantastic. And then I'm just amazed that people aren't doing this. This, is the, this should be a standard best practice, but it's not. And I don't know why. Does it cost anything? It's a little bit of time. Yeah. So, guys, that's huge. I, I just, I had already liked this on Facebook. I just upgraded it to a love. I mean, that one takeaway, guys, makes this interview gold. So, I hope you're going to take Patrick's advice and you're going to think of a realtor or a financial planner, referral partner. And I do think it has to come from the heart. Like, absolutely. If, if you turn this into, oh, I'm going to do, you know, a hundred of these and you're going to turn it into, selling and marketing, I don't think it will be as effective. But think about it, like your three best referral partner relationships, should you without being asked, give them a recommendation. And, and you know how you want them to recommend you, you know how they want you want them to refer you, lead by example, go out there proactively recommend them. Uh, maybe there's five or 10 referral partners that you feel confident about doing this. And for you mega producers that have a lot of referral partners, maybe there's 20. I don't think that there's hundreds and I don't think you should turn this into, I do this with everyone. Although if anyone in our community uh, is doing this, having success, share, let us know down below. Um, so you, you said something that when you speak at mortgage companies, uh, this is one of the things that people get as like a big aha or takeaway. Any, anything else come to mind as the big takeaways that lenders and loan officers get when you speak for lenders and mortgage companies? Well, so what, so what are the, I've been trying to figure out why this is not being adopted because those who, those who do it are seeing such good results. So I think it really comes down to scheduling. So one of the things that I talk about is the need to actually put time on your calendar for long-term relationship building. So this isn't the quid pro quo thing. So those folks who are doing the LinkedIn recommendation on a regular basis, are putting a little chunk of time on their calendar under the, the, the heading of relationship building. And what I think is important is that you just put a, a 25 minute, 30 minute chunk on your calendar that is for writing a recommendation on LinkedIn or maybe writing a review on Google or Yelp or Zillow or some other platform that would be of interest to that referral part. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a referral. It could be an insurance agent. It could be somebody in a more uh, kind of a, a less maybe not one of the categories you think of, they would equally like a LinkedIn recommendation. The other thing is, think how you feel when you get somebody uh, uh, giving you a thumbs up on, on one of the social media platforms that you look at. So this is something that I think needs to be strategically done on an ongoing basis. And what I tell my clients to do is if you put in this chunk of time with the heading relationship building on your calendar, you're going to be able to do a ton of cool stuff in a half an hour. And if you have a, a client meeting, you can't get to it that, at that chunk in time. You have to time shift it to some other time that week. But just commit to it on a regular basis. If you just do 30 minutes a week, and this is something I talk about in my seminars, for sort of long-term relationship building, not, not working sort of in the minutia of your business, but thinking long-term, who are the people who support me and how can I support them? Put time on your calendar to do that and just shift it if you get too busy to some other time that week. Well, you're guaranteed over the course of a year to have 52 intervals of this sort of long-term stuff that's so important. You can't measure an immediate outcome, but man, if you do it on a regular basis, you are going to be in a very unique category because most people don't think about the long game. Everyone's looking you know, to, to run across and score a touchdown. And I think those people who are more strategic about think, having a, a long-term game plan are going to be the ones who are successful. Uh, so love, I think it's a good opportunity. And love that. And for everybody that's part of our Friday Mastermind, 
we, we started that inspired by Darren Hardy's insane productivity program and we call them jam sessions. So everyone on this call who knows our language, a jam session, you need to schedule 30 minute jam session once a week to show digital love, digital value to your real, your um, realtors, CPAs, financial planners. Uh, Carl Stryker just posted read or reread the go giver and pay Wonderful. special attention to the character, the connector. So mm -hmm. guys, Carl, it's good to have you in our community paying attention. And uh, sounds like you've read that book also. I'm friends with the author, Bob Burke. He's a great guy. Uh, there are a lot of speaker authors who are like one thing uh, in person and another thing when they're on the stage. Bob Burke, who wrote The Go-Giver, is the real deal. And that is a great book. It's a business parable as well. So I write in the same genre as him. He's one of my inspirations, a wonderful guy. Everybody in this community should read Bob's book, The Go-Giver. It's a fantastic read. So, so Carl, thank you for, for that. And, and folks, if you have questions, bring them. So get ready for another big idea. So we talked a lot just now about how, how, do, how do we create tangible service and take things that are part of our sales experience and turn them into services. Anything else you want to share before we, we tackle another big concept? Uh, I, have, I have some other big concepts here. So uh, did you want me to elaborate on let's, anything? Let's, let's go for a big concept. What's another big concept from your book? So one of the things that um, I talk about in the book is I have been inspired over the years to get out of my comfort zone, out of my office. I, I have a sign in my office that says nothing happens behind this desk. And at one time I joined a leads group and there are some great leads groups out, out there, BNI, Latip, they have some wonderful groups, which is kind of the quid pro quo you're expected to show up and bring a lead. These could be awesome. And I know loan officers who benefit from being active in, in a group like a BNI type group. But what I have found in my own business and what I've seen happen with people in, 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 in the loan officer world is you find a cause that you're passionate about. And it is not a leads group. In my case, I want to get back to the community. So I, I chose Rotary. Uh, when I was in college, I was able to go abroad thanks to Rotary International. I joined because the mantra of this organization is service above self. So I joined because I wanted to give back to my local community. I didn't join expecting it would be great for my business. I'm here today in large part because I was referred to my first mortgage company as a client. And that came about because somebody in Rotary got to know me. We worked together in service related causes. When you're uh, shoulder to shoulder with people who believe in what you believe in, and you're showing up to give back, amazing things can happen. Now, the key is if you join a service organization of any sort and you expect an immediate return and you start pressing people for leads, you're going to just burn bridges and People are not going to want to talk to you, but you join, you, you become an, you become an officer or you, 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 you become an ambassador, you get active in the group. It could be a service club. It could be your local chamber. If you go into these organizations with a mindset of service and you really are of service and people get to know who you are and what your values are, they're going to want to do business with you. We do business with folks who we know, like, and trust. And it's ironic. I think it can be the case. It was for me that I've gotten a lot more business lift out of being in a service organization than I was getting out of being in a leads organization. And I'm guessing that some of the people in your community have experienced the same thing. I, I can assure you that that is the case. If you're on this call right now and you are part of the service organization and, and you've been intentional about it, I don't think anybody needs to be shy about getting value from being part of the service organization. One of, the, one of my favorite all times books is The Power of Who by Bob Bodine. And, and I love that book because so often we feel bad, like, oh, I have my high school friends and I've got my business friends and I have my who, my who friends over here. And we don't do business with our who, which read The Power of Who, listen to one of my interviews with Bob, absolutely do business with your who. Turn the people that you do business with into deep, re meaningful relationships that will WAC your business. Get involved in service groups. Be intentional around how you get business from those relationships. If you're doing that and there's a group that's really working well for you or you have something to share, put, let us know down below whether you're watching the recording and you're not live. Let's keep this conversation going. And if you're live right now and you are getting a lot of value from giving service as a business person, let us know. Share. Give us some inspiration. Anything else you want to say about that? Or yeah, any other I just big want idea? to I just wanted to add on to, to really get value, you have to be willing to give value. So 
I've talked to people actually in the mortgage world who I've said, hey, have you ever joined a service club or are you active in your local chamber? And they said, yeah, you know, I tried it. I didn't really get much business out of it. And I said, well, how long were you a member? It's like, I tried it for a year or two. It's like, you know, it's not, not going to cut it. I mean, people, the, the, the phrase, and it's from Bob Berg in The Go-Giver. Uh, Bob Berg writes, you know, people do business with and refer business to those who they know, they like, and they trust. That's a very simple statement. But if you dig into it, how are, how are they going to like you and trust you if they really don't know you? So if you join a service group or your chamber or whatever organization you, you, you decide could be a good connection for you for your business, and you're not there to give back to it, to serve that organization, it's not going to serve you. And I think a lot of people will hear that the first part of it is like, join a service organization, become active in your chamber. You know, and that, they just think taking that step is enough, but really it's not hard to become a leader in any of these groups. They're all hungry for people you know, stepping up into board positions, being a, an ambassador to greet people at the door. It doesn't take a lot of time. It just requires some intentionality. And I think the key is if you're going to make this work, it's got to be more than just joining. It's got to be you know, actively engaging in. And when you do that, um, people are going to ask, hey, I'm buying a home. It's like, you're a loan officer. How can you help me with that? People are going to want to do business with you. But I, I think so many people want to shortcut the process. And it just not, it's not going to work. If, you, if you're looking for the short-term fix, I think you're going to really struggle. Well, you, you just said... Yeah, you just, you just said something that I want to make sure everybody connected. People want to shortcut the process. And first of all, if, if for something like this to work, you have to be in love with the process. So you have to be in love with the group. You have to be in the group for the service first, the business second. And, and if you do that, and, and don't, don't like, oh, of all the services I could do, which one would have the most business value? Because if you aren't just like, I want to be part of this group, I want to deliver this service, and you're committing and you don't love the process, by the way, that's okay. This just might not be the right strategy. Like everything that Patrick and I are talking about, you don't have to say, oh, I'm going to do that. Like being part of a service group, dedicating that much time away from your business, away from your family, unless that's your big priority, maybe that's not the right takeaway from today's call. Uh, but, but I do want everybody on this call to think about that. Get intentional. And, and remember, the more you serve, not only is there business value in serving the families that get into debt, but you feel more confident, you feel more energetic, you show up with a greater level of passion. And, and let's face it, you, you said something, people do business with people they like and they trust. And here's the deal. The more passionate you are, the more curious you are, the more people will be drawn to you. You know, that was... Another takeaway I had from Josh's interview a couple days ago, I said, hey, Josh, it's spring home buying season 2019. What's your top priority? And I thought he was going to get really tactical. And, I, you know, oh, it's all about seller buy down. It's all about rent versus own. And he said, you know what I'm doing? I'm being more intentional about liking my clients. Because if I like them in a really true, sincere way, they're going to like me. And I'm working at it to be more present to be more focused, to like them. I thought that was a, an interesting it. takeaway from that interview. Uh, anything else on this big idea before we hit another one? You know, you don't have to join a service group to be of service. So a couple of years ago, I was talking to a, uh, a lawyer uh, in Portland, our, my hometown, and she was struggling to build up her practice area. And she's a brilliant lawyer. She's really good at her her area of law. She doesn't like networking. She doesn't have time for a service group. And in talking to her, I realized very quickly, she's super wired. She knows all these people in her world. She knows people in academics and business and government. And that's kind of the trifecta in her, in her practice area. And I said, hey, why don't you just take time a couple times a month to get people together who you think would benefit from knowing each other? Become a connector of your connections. Now, this is an idea that Keith Ferrazzi wrote about in his book, Never Eat Alone. And I love this idea. Uh, and she put it to the test. And she's been doing this actually for the past couple of years. And it has been the single biggest way she's grown her business. So she'll bring two people together. And a loan officer could bring together perhaps like an insurance person and a financial advisor. These are two people and who can be great strategic connections for each other. That, that, that loan officer knows these two people, brings them together over lunch, 
I mean, ideally they form some bond, either personal or professional, but it doesn't really matter from the LO's perspective because just being the facilitator of a connection, uh, they have really separated themselves from the pack. I mean, think about the last time somebody has done this for you. And I'll ask an audience, when's the last time someone invited you out to lunch and invited someone else, else out to lunch who, th who they thought you could benefit from knowing? And most people won't raise their hands because it hasn't happened or they say, yeah, maybe once a year, uh, something like that happens. But imagine if you did this on a regular basis where you became a connector of your connections, a bridge between people. What, what occurs whenever I do this is I, I'll get a phone call or text or hear from that person face to face saying, wow, you know, thank you for bringing us together. I've got to eat lunch anyway. Why should I eat alone? Why shouldn't I bring a couple of people together? It's a lot of fun. You know what? No pressure on me because I'm just facilitating a conversation. So I don't have to prepare for that lunch or I've done my work just by getting people to show up. It's a really easy thing to do and it will really separate you from others because so few people think along those lines. Yeah, I love that. I love that idea. And you, you lead by example. You were introduced to me by uh, Scott Brown. And usually introductions like that would result in like, hey, let's jump on a phone call and talk. And you were, you were very good about, hey, Dave, I want to buy you lunch and get to know you better. Yeah. And, and you did it in a way that was like, I just want to meet you. You know, like I'm not looking to be interviewed on your you know, channel or looking to have access to the mortgage coach community. It was like, let's, I just want to buy you lunch. Yeah. And then, and then you did something else that's important. Uh, I took the introduction very serious, but you know, I travel a lot and we didn't make an immediate connection. It wasn't because, you know, I didn't want to meet you and I was blowing you off. It was like, I was traveling. I forgot. And you thought you followed up. Yeah. So mortgage professionals out there, you know, schedule a lunch with someone just to connect. And then, uh, and remember, follow up. Don't take it personally. If they, now if they don't, if they no show you, um, listen to Jeremy's video called Guilt Marketing because he knows that he gets a lot of meetings with realtors. He knows a lot of them, no show loan officers. Guys, Guilt Marketing by Jeremy Forcier, check it out. Uh, now that is, that is the next level of mental toughness, but, but I love the way you, you kind of practice what you preach there, my friend. And, uh, I, 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 had a, I had a guy who called on me when I was in my furniture days and he would always say, Patrick, the fortune is in the follow-up. The fortune is in the follow-up. And I totally agree with that. And no is never no, it's just not yet. And I think if people can embrace the fortune, that. I, I, again, I've heard a lot of good quotes around follow-up. I'm going to post that one right now. The fortune so is in anybody, the follow-up. Anybody that sees me typing while I ask Patrick this next question, I'm, I'm just making sure we capture that for the community. So we have had a few comments. I just want to call those out. Uh, Reggie is in Toastmasters, gotten leads from Toastmasters. He's gotten more leads from to Toastmasters than PNI. So guys, Toastmasters is ridiculously awesome. I mean, learning how to speak in public, you know, while I never raised in the ranks of Toastmasters, I did Toastmasters. I did a couple different groups. I, I think I should have done it, taken it more seriously, but Great group, good business opportunity. Uh, I love what Brian Washington said, joining and serving are vastly different. Uh, and I think that kind of speaks to what we talked about earlier. Like, we don't want you just to join a group to go get business leads. We're not recommending that. Right. We're at, or what we're recommending is find a group that you are super pumped about serving, commit to serving first, and some business value um, should and could come from that. So what's another big idea, my friend? Like what's another big concept from your book? A, a huge thing, and this is really, uh, so many people are concerned about creating social media content. Um, blogging, vlogging, uh, posting on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. And I'm not saying don't do it, but I have found over the last couple of years that when I go onto social media and I, look at the first part of that expression, the social part, I get a lot more value from connecting with what other people are doing on social media um, or just taking the intelligence I get from social media and acting on it. So when I see on LinkedIn that somebody has gotten a new job, uh, 
whether it's with, a, with their existing company or with a new company, you know, you can actually LinkedIn will prompt you when you're on your, your home screen uh, to click a note and say, congratulations. But I actually use social media as intelligence gathering and then I'll jump on a call and congratulate them, send them a video text, send them a personal, something personal in the mail. Uh, social media is a great intelligence gathering tool, but if you take the default steps that they give you now, on Facebook, you know, you just click buttons, happy birthday, happy birthday with balloons, you know, they give you kind of some slangy language, but then you look at someone's wall and you see that they've got 300 comments that are all basically the same happy birthday I just don't get it because <laughs> it's such an opportunity. I mean, it's a great reminder that something important has happened for someone and just do something personal with it. And I think some of the time that we spend creating content could be much better spent interacting with other people's content because, you know, the rules of the game have changed on Facebook. You know, if a company, a realtor is, is, is posting, chances are that post is not being seen by as many pe people as it was before because Facebook makes you pay for it. And if you go on there and you see that they've done something cool and you interact with them in a personal way, they're going to really appreciate it because a lot of them are sort of lonely typing away, wondering if anyone sees their posts anymore. And not only have you seen it, but you've interacted with it. And I really think people have to sort of reevaluate what they're doing with social media, be less concerned about creating their own content and more focused on interacting with the content of others in a personal, meaningful way. And that that really allows you to break through the noise and, and build a bond with people. Wow, I, I love that. And I, I love the fact that it really does kind of bridge this, you know, let's get super personal, let's connect. We're lever we live in a digital world, so let's use digital to augment. And, and while, you know, just listening to you, I'm still gonna give them a like on their birthday, you know, maybe press the button, say happy birthday, because it's quick and it's easy. Sure. But I, I just know, like from my own birthday, I mean, I get a lot of happy birthdays and I want everybody to know my birthday's in June. I appreciate it. Uh, it really does feel cool, like, you know, getting likes and having friends say happy birthday. But I, it's kind of funny you said that. I know that the friends that, and I did get a few video messages, like, Dave, I really appreciate you. And I, and they, you know, it was like 30 seconds to a minute, but it was like, it did stand out. And it, it does and it, stand it kind out. Of, and, it, you know, and, and, I, and, of course, you get your call from your mom, your brother, you know, in Bob Bodine's land, you know, you're, you're 12. You know, your you're people that are your, you know, that you know will be at your deathbed. You know, you get those phone calls, you have those conversations, but we live in this world now where it's such a bigger scope. We have our, and we should really call it, like Facebook like friends, which yeah. I appreciate you. And I love Facebook like friends. In fact, give Patrick and I a like if you're getting <laughs> any value from today's call. Uh, but if you really want to stand out with some referral partners, give them something more. So in today's interview, you've got an idea that you need to give a LinkedIn review. That is something more you got from today's interview, you know, mobile to mobile, text to text video. Uh, hopefully you're in the mortgage coach community. If you're not giving every family you serve a total cost analysis, you're robbing yourself of loans. Like you're not getting the most value. You're not giving the most value. So TCA with a video on it. So Patrick, let's do this because I know when, when I was kind of vetting you out to interview you for the community, I got referred by Steve. I took the lunch because of that. And then you, you know, you and I talked and it was like, Hey, let's bring you into the community. And just having a book wasn't enough for me to want to bring you to the community, but I, I talked to other loan officers that are like, this guy's legit. I mean, he spoke at my sales rally. It just seems like you're trending in the mortgage space. So, so I want to talk two things. Like one, how can loan officers use your book strategically? Because I, I just think the, the headline, the connector's way. Like to me, if I'm a loan officer and I'm getting disrupted and I know my realtors are getting disrupted absolutely and we need to connect more than ever just a book called the connector's way is a good conversation for a loan officer to have with a realtor but what are some strategic ways that mortgage professionals could use your book to connect at a better level 
Yeah, so I, I wrote the book uh, not knowing about the mortgage world's need for the book. And I got a call from uh, a loan officer who read it and said, man, this book is so perfect. You mind sharing his name just in case he's a community member in the community? Oh, uh, her name, Tammy Wittrin uh, at oh, Guild Mortgage. Tammy. Yeah, yeah, Tammy's Tammy awesome. Rocks. So I, I owe so much to Tammy. She, she was the first loan officer who read the book uh, and really adopted it. She said, I'm writing my business plan. I want to I wanna have a connector's way business plan for the coming year. This book is going to be my background. And she then ordered uh, 80 copies initially for her referral partners. And she didn't know at the time that was like by far my biggest book order. I was so, so psyched to get that order from her. And then things just took off because what happened was she sent it out to the world. Uh, and next thing I knew, loan officers around the country were ordering the book for themselves and their referral partners. So it makes a great gift. It's a short read. It takes about an hour and 45 minutes to read. Uh, and actually for the mortgage coach community, you guys can order 10 or more copies, 20% off. And uh, there'll be a link. I, I think Dave will put that in the, in the notes here. Uh, but it's just a, a great thing to do is what the Connectors Way is about will help your business, but it'll help the business of your referral partners, whether they're you know, realtors, insurance people, financial advisors, it doesn't matter. I mean, anyone who's selling uh, something that is somewhat intangible, something that people are trying to drive price down, if they focus on relationship, they're going to be fine. And that's really the takeaway message that I have, uh, is if you focus on relationship, you're going to be fine. And the Connectors Way you know, sends that message uh, that it's all about it's all about connection. Um, short read. It's available in Audible, Kindle format. Got, there we go. And I got my copy right here, baby. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I see, I, I'm glad to see some notes in there. That's great. I see some yellow stickies in it. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I read it. I'm listening to it. Uh, <laughs> Audio book's great too, guys. And, and like I said, just the conversation around the connector's way, having a conversation with realtors saying, hey, we need to do a better job of connecting. We need to do a better job of turning the transaction, transactional mundane things that we do into a valuable service. Yeah. We need to deliver advice. And I, 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 I mean, I know relationship building is a buzzword. I, I think like, don't go out and relationship build, go out and connect, um, exactly. become a master advisor. You know, like if you're a mortgage professional, you need to be a Jedi master at, delivering advice because that's the other thing like in the insurance industry the people that are still relevant they are connecting and they have relationships but they're also advisors like they're bringing some tangible sage advice that you can't just get calling geico uh and so if you want to crush it as a mortgage professional you need to connect in a deeper richer way and you need to deliver advice in a way that's tangible and obvious no better way than the tca so guys, I'm gonna, you know, we've got about, I don't know, eight minutes left. So I've got a few more questions for Patrick, but if you have questions for us, we have time to get to them. So, so Patrick, are there any like quotes that are like, you know, somebody, it might be one of your quotes. It might be someone that, you know, is just a mentor to you, someone that inspired you. Any, any quotes that are uh, on point and have made a difference for you? Uh that Bob Berg quote, I just want to highlight that one because I think that's one of your, uh, one of your followers uh, mentioned that, you know, people do business with those who they know, like, and trust. And I think that's so important. And if, if rather than a quote, I want to share a statistic. You know, every day in our country, there are 2 billion conversations going on. People talking about products and services and companies that they like and dislike. And, you know, we live in a world in which if we're in business, we think about marketing, but we don't think enough about the conversations. And what gets people talking, uh, either good or bad, it's not usually, it's not about price, it's usually about that remarkable service, that, that experience that they had. And I think that if loan officers focus on the total experience that they're giving to their customers, the, the way they serve the realtors who serve them, if they think about that entire experience and how they can improve that and set themselves apart from their competition, I think they're going to do just fine. And it's realizing it's that conversation, those 2 billion conversations a day that really drive who succeeds and who fails in business. And that's true for mortgage. It's true for actually all products and services. And I don't think enough people focus on 
on that fact that there's this conversation going on. And I think now that we're in this digital age, it, it goes viral. You know, people will go on to Yelp. They'll go on to Zillow. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to share their comments, good, bad, not usually indifferent. Um, but if you provide a remarkable experience, you're going to grow more than you possibly could. And if you're terrible and you're not living up to the promise, uh, your demise is just accelerated in the digital age. So I think the cornerstone of relationship building is really thinking about that experience because you can't be a great relationship builder if you're not, if you're not giving an optimal experience. And uh, I, I think that that's really the, the starting point for, for everything that we've been discussing. Cool. Well, I have one more question. Also want to really push people. I think it's so on point. This interview I did with Josh, you know, it's called the art and science of personal connection. Also inspired by you, Patrick, I created a, a new playlist in the mortgage coach community called personal connection. So the interviews that I do that I think are really important, like if you want to improve your presence, you want to improve your connection, they're going to be in this playlist. Uh, the first interview I did with you, Patrick, is already in there. This interview will be in there. And I, I just want every mortgage coach loan officer in the context of this conversation to one, rewatch the interview with, Jer with Josh. And then two, when you think of the total cost analysis, I mean, look at it, you know, it's got company brand, it's got his brand, it's got a video, it's got pure value. Uh, at the bottom, we now integrate with social surveys. So it's got reviews that he's collected. Awesome. You know, think, think about the service that you're giving, the advice that you're giving, the value that you're giving. And guys, here's the deal. I do not believe tech companies and marketers like Quicken are gonna kill and eliminate referral-based loan officers. But I absolutely believe that there are referral-based loan officers that are mastering technology, they're using video, they're using reviews, they're doing the things that Patrick's talking about. And between the disruptors that are coming in and the referral-based loan officers that are getting new skills, creating new habits, they are going to crush you if you do not get up to speed. And so uh, I urge you to do that. So my last question, because we do have so many new loan officers coming into the mortgage business, you know, 20, 25, 30, you know, we just have a lot of new blood coming in the mortgage space. What advice would you give to your 25 year old self? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> It really, it, it all comes down to relationship. And my 25-year-old 25, 25 self believed salvation was out marketing, in marketing really being advertising in my eyes then. It was all about the spend and less about the connection. And if I could go back in time, I'd say, hey, Patrick, focus more on that connection and the relationship. Don't worry about buying your way to attention. Just really think about building strong bonds with people and you're going to be very successful. I love that. I love that. And I have seen a lot of new loan officers, you know, whether they're creating videos and using it for marketing, whether they're, they're using digital really effectively, you know, text, Facebook. Here's the deal, guys. Do that. Be comfortable with it. It gives you passion. But do that to drive the in-person experience. Yeah. You know, and for those of you that have lived on the in-person experience, you know, it comes through balance. You know, you've got to use both in today's world. The loan officer that balances the art and science, and the art is you. The science is video and technology is going to win the biggest. So, hey, man, you have crushed it, brother. Uh, any last words of wisdom as we wrap up today's call? Anything you uh, want to tell the community? Yeah, actually, if people are interested in learning more, if they go to theconnectorsway.com, they can read about the book, see about my speaking programs for mortgage companies and their referral pro partners. It's all there. Uh, and there's some tips and other things that we didn't have a chance to discuss that they can, they can access there. So just really appreciate the opportunity, Dave, to connect with you and your community. Yeah, well, I appreciate you. If you are a manager, a leader, and, and getting a deeper personal connection between the loan officers and the realtors, loan officers and their past customers. I, I recommend having Patrick as a speaker. So either, you know, if you're a manager, recommend him at your next sales rally. If you are the head of production on this call, I, I think Patrick's awesome. I expect to see him on a lot more stages in the mortgage space. So uh, thank you, my friend. I'm looking forward to seeing you out in the, 
out in the trenches of the mortgage industry. Thanks, Dave. I look forward to staying connected with you, of course. Yeah, for sure, man. I'm looking All forward right. to the next lunch. All right. Take care. This call is a wrap, guys. Give us a like. Share it with your mortgage friends. If you're a manager, schedule your next sales meeting to talk about the big takeaways you had. Take care, y'all. Thank you.